As Mr. Fred, we're going to go through the process of reverse engineering a database designed into what's known as an entity relationship diagram, also called an ERD. So I have here uh, a tab already done, and this is a reverse engineered ERD pulling from the Sakia database. So this is a little bit more complicated. So I thought what we would do is we would dial it back a little bit and use a smaller model. And that's the one known as the world database. So in this particular download available on the MySQL website and also demonstrated in a prior video, there are three tables. So this should be a little bit cleaner to look at. And then we're gonna write some simple select statements making use of joins to pull data from two or three of these tables here. So to begin this, we're gonna go up here to database and we're gonna select reverse engineer. Beginning this process, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You could see that we could have all your connection information and we're gonna click on next and we're gonna to have to provide the password. So this is gonna be the password for your user account. You're gonna click okay and then it's gonna take you through all these steps. Now, as you move through these, I will call them wizard-like steps, you're gonna notice that there's gonna be a blue check mark. Every time you see that, that means something good is happening. So we're gonna see, click next. We're gonna um, just focus on the world database here and then we're gonna click next again. It begins to pull the objects that are already defined and already built, and we're gonna reverse engineer a diagram. So we're going from something that's already built to something more visual to help us do our queries. Click next, it tells you the objects that we're pulling in, and then we click execute. It begins to build them out and then show it visually. Now, what's nice about MySQL Workbench is that it will show you this right inside the tool. However, there are some other tools out there, Microsoft Visio and some other ones that will allow you to create ERD. So we're gonna click next and then it tells us that we have our three tables and we click finish and there we are. So this is what's known as an ERD, a very simple ERD, but as you could see, you could move these objects around. These are tables inside the database. So this particular table here is called country language one and this is country and city. These connectors, these are your relationships. So there is a relationship between country and country language, and then country and city. When you look at these um, connectors here, you can see that you can click on it. And when you click on it, it's telling you the fields that this relationship is related through. So when we look at a relational diagram, we understand that typically a relationship can be built between two tables between a primary key and foreign key relationship. That's 98% of all the relationships that are out there in database design. You also notice that there's some hash marks and, and looks like an, an upside down triangle, I guess. But what that is, is known as the crow's foot notation. So this is, you, you can read it either way, going from the country or to the city table or the city to the country table. But when we look at this, we could see that a country has a one to many relationship to the city. So this is known as cardinality. We have minimum cardinality and we have maximum cardinality. The one to many or one to one or many to many is known as maximum cardinality. You'll also notice that there's little hash marks on these lines along with the crow's foot. Well, that's known as minimal cardinality. And the minimal cardinality will also assist us in building the SQL that can create our relationships, our foreign keys and so on. All right, so what is the, how do you read the maximum cardinality for country to city? Well, it's a one to many. So the one side is over here touching country and the many side is over here touching city. So it's a one to many. So a country can have many cities and a city can belong to a country. Now, what's interesting about this, if you notice there's two hash marks here, that means at, or it has to have at least a mandatory one. So a city cannot exist if it doesn't exist in a country. Now that is also known as a business rule. And when you build databases um, different than this even, you're gonna see that that cardinality will be dictated by the way a business is conducting its operations. So in this rule here, yeah, a city must exist in a country. Now, can there be a city not in a country? I'm sure we can think of some examples, maybe, maybe not. All right, looking at the relationship over here on the left, we could see a country can have many languages, but a language ultimately will have to exist in a country. So this is the case in the United States and a lot of European countries where they can speak many languages. So that's what we're really looking at here is we're looking at a one-to-many and a one-to-many in this way. 
We'll take a look at another example in the Sakia database and a follow-on example where we look at this as an intersection table. Okay, so let's write some SQL pulling some data. All right, in our first example, we're gonna create a query that's gonna return the countries and the city information with country names. Okay, so the relationship will hover over here. We could see that we're gonna create a select statement that will pull that information of the country, the city, and the population. So we're gonna pull it from the, these, this particular table here, and then we'll also be pulling it from this table over here. Notice once again, the join that we're gonna create is gonna be built between the code field in the country table and the country code field in the city table. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna come over and we're gonna pop open a query tab and we're gonna begin. Okay, so let's write a query that's gonna return some data from two different tables. There's two types of select statements that make use of joins and the two styles of joins are an implicit join and an explicit join. I'm gonna show you both because you may end up either writing your own query someday that makes use of the explicit syntax or you may be looking at maintaining some legacy code and that might be making use of the implicit syntax. So it's good to know both. All right, we're gonna begin. We're gonna just write a query that's gonna display um, the name of a city and its population, okay? We're gonna use the implicit syntax first. So we're gonna start off by saying select, and I'm just gonna break these across several lines, and this isn't necessary in writing your queries, but it makes it easier to read and debug uh, as we go along here. So I'm gonna go from, now, we're gonna pull this from the country table and the city table. Then we're gonna do our implicit join, and we are gonna make sure the join is following along with what the ERD said. So if we come over here and we hover over it, the join is gonna be between the code field from the country table and the country code field from the city table. So let's go back to our query here. And now in this implicit join, we do it by stating the table name, country.code, which is the field, equals the city dot country code. All right, I'm gonna run this query. Now you're gonna see something happen here and then I'll explain it in a second. So I'm gonna run it and you're gonna see that down here in the log we get an error. The column name in the field list is ambiguous. So the column called name is ambiguous. So when you look at this, I'm asking it for the name field. The problem is, and the reason why it's ambiguous, is if I expand my two tables that I'm working with here, and I expand my columns, I have a field in the city table called name, and I have a field in the country table called name. And the database is simply telling you, which one do you want? Or it's asking you, which one do you want? So what we have to do is begin to qualify our columns with the table names themselves. There's a real, uh, there's a long way and a short form to do this. So to clear this up, we could easily say, country.name, and that should, well, that should help us out. So let's run the query. All right, column population in the field list is too ambiguous. All right, let's take a look at that. We have a population field in the, in the city table. We have a population field also in, the, uh, in the, the country table. So there it is, it's still appearing. So sometimes when you think you solve one error, it just kind of surfaces another error because we didn't see that error just a second ago and you have to kind of route them out. So I'm gonna uh, clarify that or quantify it if you even wanna call it that. I'm gonna say city. So let's go ahead and run our query. All right, there we go. So now we start to see that we have some countries here and we have some populations. That's somewhat helpful, but there's another thing we could do also is I'm gonna break this down across lines and we're gonna make use of something known as an alias is one thing they're known as and we're gonna rename this at as country, and then we're gonna do as we could say city pop, pop, whoops, population. Okay, so we're gonna run that query and we can then see that it changes the column headers to be a little bit easier to read. Let's build on this a little bit more because this information is helpful, but we're gonna expand it even further. I'm gonna go ahead and we have the country there, but let's go ahead and add the city. 
So we're going to then say city.name as city. Make sure I have my comma in there because I'm just placing it in the list. And I'm going to run my query. And there I start to see the name of the country, the name of the city, and then the population. All right. This is one way. I'm going to shorten it up a little bit. I'm going to show you how you can even, you know, make it easier to type. So we'll call country C and city CI. So up here at the top, I'm going to call it C, CI, and CI again. And I could also do that down in the join statement. So we'll say country, which is C and city, which is CI. So it shortens it up a little bit, easier to read to a certain extent, and you see this a lot, and you're gonna see this in the next example too. We're gonna to run our query, and we still get our output. We get the same output, so not much has changed. Once again, this is known as an implicit join syntax. Let's take this same query now and convert it over to an explicit join syntax. What's the main difference with them? Well, the explicit join syntax makes use of the word join. And that's what we're going to see here now. All right, I'm going to add it to this same uh, query window just for a little bit of comparison's sake. And for sake of time, I'm just going to paste my query here. And you can see it's looking a lot like it. Now, what is different? Okay, let's take a look. Down here, after the from reserved word, we start to see from country C. Okay, very similar to what's happening up here. But then we start to see some syntax that's a little bit different. We're making use of what's known as an inner join, and the word inner can be optional, but we, for good form code, we're gonna include it, inner, and then we make use of the, the word join. So we're joining country to city, and notice we're using the, the shorthand notation, and then we make use of the word on. Now the on is starting to set the stage for what the join is going to be. So it's gonna be joining it on the country code and the city country code. I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna run it. And there I get my output again and everything is good. So this syntax is a little bit more common to see in a lot of the newer applications and if you are gonna be writing it. Now, as far as the preference goes, there are some discussions about performance and so on and some folks do feel one is easier to read or write than others. You could choose and you can go down your own path with that. All right, let's go back over to our ERD here for a second, right? So we just did a join between this table, this country table and the city table. What if we want to also now include this table over here, a third table in this uh, array of data displaying goodness? Okay, so let's take a look. We're going to go back over to our query. And I'm going to clear this out. Let's just go ahead and we'll do, well, we'll do a new query tab. Okay, so now... We're going to walk down that same path and we'll just say select, uh, and we're gonna use the shorthand notation on this also, c.name as country, ci name as city. And now we're gonna be adding a new table in. We're gonna call it cl for uh, the country language. So we'll call it CL and we'll call it language from, now we're gonna pull from country C, oops, inner join city CI on C.code. We're gonna make use of our join syntax that we already discovered in that last query. Now, with this here, we're going to do another inner join. This time now, we're going from country C, which we have to make this modification right here. And we are going to go here now to the country language table. So we'll say country language CL on. Now, this join here, what is it going to be? Let's go take a look at our ERD. We'll click on the line to get a better idea. So we're going from code in the country table over to country code in the country language.
table. So the primary key of the one table to the foreign key of another. All right, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna go from country language CL on c.code equals cl.countrycode. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, we have an error, right? Check the manual that corresponds to MySQL server version for the right syntax. So we have this inner join issue. And if I come back up here, I can see where the, the error is appearing and it looks like I mistyped the word inner. I'm gonna run it. And the table world country language does not exist, so we have to debug that. And upon further inspection, I could see once again, I'm plagued by my own typing. So one of the reasons why I also left these errors into this video is that you could see what I'm going through and that it's common to make mistakes and you just kind of walk through them, reading the error, taking a look at your code. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, there we go. Now we start to see the output here in our grid. We get the country, the city, and the language. All of this is pulling from three tables. Now you could also filter this a little bit or you can also make use of the other techniques in SQL. If I wanted to put this into a specific order, I could then add order by, uh, we could say c.name, uh, ci.name, and then cl.language. There it goes that typing again. We'll run that query and it'll put it into more of an alphabetical ascending order. So we're going ordering it by the country first, then the city, and then ultimately by the language. Now, if we wanted to add a where clause to filter this, well, we could add that in too. And to do that, well, we could add this in here. Now this is gonna, typically the where clause will come before your order by, so we will put it in here. We'll say where, we're gonna order by the, or we're gonna filter it on only showing the United States. So we're gonna say c.name equals, and in single quotes, United States, and we'll run our query. And there we get only the United States and also the, the basically the cities and the languages that they speak. All right, so that's using the explicit syntax because it makes use of the word join. Now, if we wanted to write this in an implicit format, we could do that too. I'm gonna come down a little bit in this one here and I'm gonna make use of the first portion of the select statement here so it's easier to type. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that down here. Now, okay, so we're gonna first of all list out our, our tables that we're using. So we're using country C, we're gonna use city.ci, or excuse me, CI, and we're gonna use country language CL. Now we do our, our join statements, which exist in the where clause, c.code equals CI, oops, dot, country code, and we then come in and we separate these joins with the word and. So we come in and we say and c.code equals cl.countrycode. If I could type, I'd be awesome. And c.name equals United States. And then we could also add our order by order by, we'll say is population, ci dot population. Whoops, get rid of that little comma there, put a period. Okay, so the big difference with this syntax now is that you could see in the inner join uh, or the explicit syntax, we're making use of the inner join and we're kind of ratcheting it on. We're kind of like stacking it into there with this implicit syntax, everything happens in the where clause and each join statement between the primary and the foreign keys are separated by the word and, okay? And then ultimately, if you're gonna use an order by, that's gonna come at the very end. So let's go ahead and highlight our code. We're gonna run it. And oh, we, we got it, we do have an error. Let's take a look at it, ci.population in the order clause. Oh, there it is, another misspelling. Gets you every time. We'll highlight it, run it. And there we go, there's our output. I hope you found this helpful and keep an eye open for more tutorials covering MySQL and the SQL statements that we could use to get to our data.